Hello, everybody. I'm Stephanie from Mid City Beat, and welcome again to another uh, episode of Mid City TV and Discover Yucatan Off the Beaten Path with Carlos Sosa. So, we've been with Carlos for the last several weeks, and we've talked about lots of different interesting and cool topics about Yucatan and about the area, about this area in general of southern Mexico. Today we're going to give a, a talk, or he's going to give a talk, give us a talk about Mayan culture. And I know, you know, a lot of people know a little bit about Maya and, you, you know, they kind of maybe have some idea about, about this grand culture that is such a part of the state that we all love, either live in or come to visit. And I think it's really important for us to get a little bit more of an understanding. We have talked about Maya in, of course, in other videos as well, but we're gonna kind of give a general uh, history and idea of, of the Mayan culture in, in this area from starting from way, way when they first, when the civilization first came about until modern day time. So I'm going to invite Carlos in. And also I want to remind you, you I have the comments open. So please ask questions if you're interested. And if you have any specific questions for Carlos, I'll be looking at the chat. So here we go. Carlos, hello, hello. Hola, hola. hola welcome. Hola, hola. Bienvenido, como estas? Muy bien, gracias. Gracias okay. de nuevo. Yeah, yes, of course. So uh, I was just telling our audience that you are going to be talking about the Maya today and giving us a general overview of uh, the Mayan culture here in the Yucatan Peninsula in general. And um, so, uh, so yeah, so tell us a little bit, uh, Carlos, how would you start us out here with this very large conversation? Because it's a, it's a big topic. So let's like, <laughs> we'll we'll need weeks. <laughs> We, we would need weeks in order to talk about it. But we're, I know, just gonna make, we're gonna resume it so we can have an idea of uh, this, uh, this, one of these civilizations that is just amazing is part of, uh, of one of the two mother cultures that were located in what is called Mesoamerica mm -hmm. or Middle America. Right. There were two of them, the Nahuatl, which is the one that was located in the central part of Mexico and going west, going up north and a little bit northeast, and the Maya, oh, I'm sorry, and the Olmec, that is from southern side of uh, the city the city of Mexico and coming down to Oaxaca, Veracruz, Tabasco, and the Mayas belong to the Olmecs, to the Olmec and mother culture. Yeah. Ah, okay. And the old, okay, so here on the map we say we see Teotitlan. And the Olmecs, where are the Olmecs in? Uh... Uh, the Olmecs were in Oaxaca, around mm -hmm. near Puebla, near uh, Veracruz, okay. Tabasco. Actually, the main okay. area where the, where the home of the Olmecs apparently was located in Tabasco. Okay, and the, the Olmecs. The Mayas is yeah. just one branch of the Olmecs. Okay, so give us some reference. The Olmecs were, we're talking what years here? We're talking about before Christ. Yeah. We're talking about two about 2000 before, before Christ BC. Right, right. And actually, when we talk about the Mayas, which is what we're gonna be seeing on, this, on, the, on the right side, where you can see the peninsula, you can see right. yellow states or color, right. yellow color on the states like uh, in Chiapas. Right. In, in, Campeche, a little bit of Tabasco, Yucatan, Quintana Roo, and then down in Belize and Guatemala and part of San Salvador and part of Honduras. This is known as the Maya area. Right. And it's got uh, an extension of uh, around 300,000 square kilometers. Wow. The, uh, yeah. the peak of the population, according to the archaeologists, during the classical period was nearly 16 million people living in all this, uh, what is known as the Mayan area. Wow. And we do have a diversity, a diversity of uh, landscapes. Like going all the way up to the north, we had the, the plains, which is where Yucatan is, the right. lowlands. And then as we come down to the south in Chiapas and part of Tabasco in Guatemala, then we start having mountains. Uh, right, so yeah. We, different, we had different yeah. kinds of uh, uh, habitats where this, uh, this civilization grew up. And uh, 
at the very beginning, we're talking about three, four thousand years before Christ. There were hunters and 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 collectors. They were collecting right. fruit and vegetables, whatever they found, and they were hunting. They were nomadic people. They were just moving around according to the hunt, according to the season where they could harvest or just pick up uh, fruits or vegetables, whatever they were needing. And it wasn't until 2000 BC when they start organizing a little bit these agricultural systems. And once they dominated the agricultural system or they domesticated agriculture, they settled. And that's when they became sedentaries. In uh, and, that, 2000, huh? and that's when the civilization, they started to become the great Mayan civilization. That's when they, that, that's when they become sedentaries and they start building up villages and those villages are the ones that grew up and developed. And this mm -hmm. is what we have uh, the samples nowadays. Right. It was a process where they learned and they were achieving so many uh, knowledge or so many uh, tasks and the achievements of the Mayas in many fields. It's just amazing. Are just amazing. They are incredible, advanced in astronomy, in mathematics, in architecture, in physics, and and in medicine also is one of the aspects, one of the topics that they dominated a lot. But besides that, uh, they domesticated uh, agriculture. They created systems of uh, hydraulic systems to irrigate plantations wherever there was not enough water. So they were collecting water from the rain in huge artificial lagoons that were called buktes, and the smaller ones that were called, uh, uh, it was like a, like, a, like a reservoir that was called a chultun that was uh, really small and they were located around every houses or every building on the cities. So and those they were to collect, to collect water eh? for the house? To collect water from the rain. Right. It's for, irrigation, and also, was it for irrigation and then also probably for their houses? Sure, for both of them. But right. it was only found in, these chultunes were found in, in most of the cities because they have their own uh, supply of water at, at the building where they, where they were living. But in the case of the Yucatan, it was a need because we don't have any rivers, we don't have any lakes. Mm -hmm. So the only right. source of water, besides the rain, could be the cenotes, but cenotes are not really enough and not, not practical to be using that water for irrigation. So it could be only for domestic use. So they right. had to be in regions where there were elevations, hills, and the terrain wasn't that flat. They could build hydraulic systems, irrigation systems like canals and all this kind of uh, systems that allowed them to move the water from the huge reservoirs to the plantations. And that happened only in the northern part. And the other areas, they also used like, uh, build like dams in order to control the, the flow of water so they were not floated different places. So it, they were just amazing with that. And astronomy and architecture and all the knowledge one of the few uh, civilizations in the world that created a writing system, a full writing system. And they use uh, hieroglyphics in order to, uh, to be uh, recording all the information that they wanted to. They have uh, books that were called codexes that were made out of bark of trees, or sometimes they use the skin of animals like, like deer. And in other, in other times they use uh, to be carving the hieroglyphics in the stones, monuments that were called stiles or in panels on the walls, or even in, in, in vessels and made out of clay. So, so, the so lo, let me, let me uh, uh, interrupt you for a second here. So yeah, all of these things that you're, mes that you're mentioning, all of these skills and abilities of the Maya, was that throughout the whole Mayan, uh, the whole Mayan world, how we, how we say, all this area here, we were yes. seeing evidence all of that. No, no, all, no. all of them they have the knowledge. The, right. the, uh, the, the calendar is considered to be the second, the second most accurate in the world. The only one that is most accurate than the Maya is the one that is measured in astronomical observatories using nu nuclear clocks. And right. after that is the Maya that follows. And it's millions of tens of, uh, of seconds, the difference between the, that one at the, at the astronomical observatories and the Mayas. And mathematics were all, also extremely advanced. The, one of the first people in the whole world that uses zero. Right, you're right. So we and have I, a, huh? So, okay, so we were talking about the Maya being, you know, their civilization coming from the Olmecas and really establishing as a, a sedentary about 2000 before Christ, correct? Is that what you said? That's, when, so, they start, that's when they started to become sedentaries. 
Okay. So about what, uh, do they have evidence about in what years more or less that are we seeing all these great advances in science and math and the irrigation systems? Uh, I'm sure it's at different times during that. No, it all, it, all began, it all began before Christ. All this advance in, in architecture, in construction, in this irrigation systems and the knowledge that they have in, uh, in astronomy and all that, it began uh, before Christ. We're talking about probably 200, 250 before Christ, or even a little earlier in certain areas. But what is considered to be the peak of the uh, civilization is uh, what is known as a classical period that goes from the 3rd century to the 9th century. 19th century. That right. is supposed to be the, the moment or the time when they got to have the, the deepest knowledge in all the uh, in all the topics that they domain. So right. in that case, uh, we're talking about the 400s, 500s, even down the 900s. Now, what happened in certain regions, 900s is known as the late classical period or the end of the classical period. And then the post-classical begins right after that and ends around the 15th century. 1400s. In right. the classical period is known because at the end of the classical period, around the 900s, eight, late 800s, 900s, that's when many of the major cities collapse. And okay. this, they collapse according to the region where they were for, there are factors which are common and there are factors which are exclusively for certain regions. Like one of the factors that we have, that affected the region of Yucatan was the drought. And the uh, drought was practically caused by them. And the reason is that in order to build all these structures that we have seen in all the Mayan places that we have gone, Ushmal, Chichen, wherever you name it, they right. use the same kind of material, they use the same technique, they were using limestone, and they had to bake the stone in order to make the material, to make the mortar, to make the stucco that were using in order to build all these structures. And it, the only way how they could bake the stones was by cutting millions and millions and millions of trees in order to make, to make these huge ovens. And what happened, they were deforestated. And the deforestation at that moment, like that one, you can imagine right. how many tons of material is needed in order to build this. It's not right. only the stones, all the mortar and all the stucco that was used. And now we can imagine how many trees they were needed in order to bake all that stone. And this is only one building. And right. this is only one city. And the stone, where is the, the stone coming from? Just right under anywhere, the ground? Anywhere, right. anywhere that we dig around, we look. Remember that the whole peninsula is a huge plateau of limestone. It's what is called the karst. Right. So and wherever, we dig, wherever we dig, we're going to find limestone. Some places closer to the surface, other times a little deeper because of the height of the terrain, because of the humus, because of the, 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 the soil, whatever, depending on the elevation of the terrain in relation to the sea level. That would be how much we had to dig in order to get to the stone, but everything is limestone. Every single building that was made on the Maya land was made, most of it, with limestone. With limestone, right. Probably in Guatemala they were using, or Chiapas, they were using sometimes all the kinds of stones because those are volcanic areas. And they could have used, or they probably had chances to use all the materials, not as much as the other ones, but it's still a little bit different. But the basic, or the basis of these constructions were the limestone. Right. The yeah. So, also, this kind of uh, this kind of drought that was. I'm gonna have a, a jaguar walking by me. Max, move, <laughs> move. Max, Those are get. move it. <laughs> <laughs> we love Max. <laughs> no, no, I got the other two on the road right next to me, but they don't get close. <laughs> They're about ready. Uh, and, uh, I was you telling know? you that in the case of huh? Well, I, you, well, you were talking about the droughts, because kind of some of these theories. And well, the, the drought is... The, hold on real quick. There's there's different theories about uh, why the Mayan civilization uh, collapsed, correct? Actually, there's only one. I mean, the, the, it's only one theory that, that involves several factors. Like I was telling you, the, the one that is the drought is, in a way, uh, found in the northern part of the Yucatan. Because in these places, we don't have rivers, we don't have lakes, so the drought could have been here uh, uh, harder. And also right. remember that not having a jungle that could have been as dense as you can find in Chiapas, on the southern side of Campeche, or in Guatemala, the rain cycle is shorter and it's less. It's, 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 not, as, it's not as dense uh, 
as we can find in other places. There's not a lot of uh, a lot of uh, humidity that will right. be evaporating and then condensating and bringing the rain. So if we cut all the, the trees that we have, which are not so many, and besides that, what is found in the northern part of Yucatan is what is called the low semi-tropical jungle, and mm -hmm. it's deceitful. So in these right. cases, if we cut all these trees in order to make the ovens, what's going to be happening? And besides that, the plantations for the corn, for all the plantations, for all the food that they needed, together with the deforestation for building, that made a desert. And having no trees in these places, the chain was broken. So there was no rain. And, and there was a lake that is called Chichancanap that is in the central part of the peninsula, very close in Quintana Roo, but very close to the state line with Yucatan. Mm -hmm. where the University of Florida made some investigation in that place and the stratus of the wall of that lake, they found droughts of 13 years. So mm -hmm. a drought of 13 years will kill everything that will be here. And right. what happened when we have a drought yeah. like that? Yeah. The, the stronger cities go against the, the smaller one or the weaker ones to get all the, the goods that they have, all the food that they could have. And they fought to them because to get all that. So there were there was a few things going on that drought because of the need of food, because of the need of uh, supplies, created wars between the other cities. Which and, you know, I'm just to, to um, shoot in right here right now, is that we continuously are seeing in our history uh, evidence of things that are happening now. We have to continue to remember to study our history and see what happened in history why these great civilizations collapsed and so that we can hopefully avoid that from happening. Oh, we are not yeah. avoiding it. <laughs> it's a condition no, of the human being. Exactly. Human beings we are destructive. We, we are, destroy yeah. all what we have. And, and I think, you know, the, the, modern, the modern man, the modern person, for some reason, thinks we're uh, immune. I know that's not going to happen here. We're, we're too technologically advanced, but we're not. Stephanie, we're not. Stephanie we can resume that attitude with one word, ego. Ego, yeah, ego. absolutely. They wanted to yeah. show that they are the best, the greatest, the most powerful to build the structure which are so high, so big to show the power. And this is what happened. Right, right. Con right. Consciously or not, they destroy it. Right. But the right. ego was stronger than anything else and they paid the price. Right. So, so the, the civilization starts to decline and then there starts to be wars. Within. And, and this is what this is a factor in the northern part, but there are other two factors which are also important in this: the mm -hmm. decay of the society. Okay. In order to keep the control of these cities, the dynasties that were ruling the cities intermarry. Oh. So this intermarriage between the families, between the relatives, sometimes siblings, or sometimes they were so close that most likely were creating genetical problems that were in a way blocking the new generation to learn what they were supposed to have learned in order to keep the control of people. Remember, the difference is knowledge. Right. The knowledge right. that they have about astronomy, about physics, about mathematics, about everything that they were using in order to create a system that will be, they control people by fear. That's exactly what they did. Why they keep them in Moran, which is happening nowadays the same way. It doesn't right. have any changes on that. This is right. cycle. Uh, it, the, the history is cyclic. It's, it's, there are right. cycles that are repeated constantly every certain time. So right. what happened when they got into Mary and they could not learn what they were supposed to have to predict eclipses, to predict the, uh, the arrival of the rain because of the season, because there were seasons that knowing how the, the sun moves and what position the sun has in order to mean rainy season, harvest, and around here it's not really that hard because we only have two seasons practically, the drought and the rainy season. Sure, we, say, yeah. we always say a joke, we only have two seasons in the Yucatan, the hot season and the hotter season. Exactly. <laughs> That's where we are. But actually this is what happened. I mean, not having that knowledge, they lose control of people. People lost the fear. And by losing the fear, they might either abandon the cities or rebel against them and fight them. Yeah. This is one of them. And it, there's another factor that could have been affected also around here that was war. And we can see that the war, when the drought was becoming stronger, the war was also an element that was affecting a lot of the cities. But the war here was not as active as it could have been found on the area of the southern part of Campeche and Chiapas in Guatemala. 
And one of the reasons is that a lot of the goods that were used in other parts of the Maya land and also in other parts of the rest of the country, like by the Aztecs and other places or, or Toltecs and other ones, it was jade. Jade, most of it come from Guatemala. There was a river called Motagua and there was a valley called Motagua where they found a lot of jade. And all the jade that we use or was used by the Mayas and the southern part of Mexico and some of the areas of Mexico too, most of it was coming from Guatemala. And what happened? They, they had to travel by rivers, on the rivers, by boats, bringing all this jade in order to take to different places. And there were cities on the bank of the rivers that were collecting taxes for every boat that came back with, it, with this. And there were other cities that wanted to have that control of that city had on the path of the commercial activities to have the, all those taxes, so there were wars. The, uh, there was information that mentioned that three cities collapsed about the same time, Palenque, Bonampak, and Yashilan. They were okay. with, between, within 50 years or so, that's when they all collapsed. And there was a highly activity of war in the region because they wanted to have the control of all those goods, all these taxes, all these, uh, if they paid them with a space, they paid it with, uh, with the same material because there was no currency. The system of uh, commercial, the commercial activity was based on in, 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 uh, trading. Right. It was a trading system. You trade this by that, like in the case of Yucatan, oh. that we don't have anything, it was salt. Oh, so right. all the jade that came, all the obsidian that came here, and all the other elements that are not found in Yucatan, most of it was trade by salt. Uh -huh. And that's why it was taken to other places. There are, there are salt areas, what areas that produce salt. But not as much as we can find on the coast of Yucatan. Belize produce salt, but it's a different way. They have like uh, like high platforms, and they were just draining the water and evaporating. They were collecting the crystal of the of the uh, the salt, which is not the case here. The massive production is in the Yucatan on the salt flats. Right, right, right. And there are lakes, and there are also mine salt mines in other places too. But the the amount is not really that big as you can find in on the salt flats of the Yucatan. For this right. part of the country, I mean, for this part of the world, like we're talking because if you go down to South America, you go to Africa, those places that mine salt, which are just huge. There's one that is uh, very similar to the system that we have here, that is in Baja California, that is called Guerrero Negro, which actually that is the largest salt flat that is found in Latin America. Oh, okay. So in uh, so here we're talking now we're talking uh, about what years? 500 A.D. Uh, so, we're talking that collapse. We're talking about 800s, 900s. 800, 900 uh, AD. That's so what in, is known as the end of the classical period, the post, the, the late classical period. Right. Some okay. cities survive, like Chichen Itza. After the big ones collapsed, Chichen Itza rose and became the ruling city of the area. There was not much competition, so it was in a way easier for Chichen Itza to control all this region. And they also, of course, the city that was powerful, the city that was rich, the city that was controlling everything, that was the city that controlled the salt production in the Yucatan. Now it's Chichen Itza. It was Chichen Itza <clears throat> after yeah. the 10th century. And okay, so that the height of Chichen Itza was after the 10th century. The height was after the 10th century. And when did Which Chichen Itza, was, when was the decline of Chichen Itza? What? It was the 1300, 1250, something like that. So not too, not too uh, long before the Spanish arrived, which they arrived. No, in the no, actually, no, no. It was about two hundred years before the Spanish arrived. Relatively, right? It was two hundred years, but still, relatively, not so far off. No, no, much, yeah, right. max, max. So the, no, I, I know. In, in in another interview, we talked uh, after Chichen Itza fell, many people went to um, yeah, Mayapan. The Mayapan, yeah, Mayapan. That's right, yeah. And after Mayapan, some groups left back to Guatemala in a way. And the last city, espérate, ve por allá. <laughs> ve por allá. <laughs> the cat. The, the cat. cat. <laughs> and uh, the last city that was uh, built where some of the Mayas, in a way, hide or refugee, you know, if we can say it that way, was called Tayasal, that is in Lake Flores, which is Lake Petén, the city of oh. Flores in Lake Petén. Flores, and that right? city was it could only be dominated by the Spanish around 1697. That that is the day that is given to us when the Spanish actually controlled that city. That was the last one. 
That was right. the last city that was uh, controlled by the Mayas and the last city that the Spanish could actually conquer or dominate. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, that's, it's a, it's really fascinating. I'm wondering, I, w I would like to get into, uh, until the Mayan, uh, the Mayan times now, but I think that we might, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we got it. We got a lot of time. Uh, we had a lot of time here to, uh, to cover. So, okay. So this was in the 1300s or so, uh, that's when really the last the last cities were uh, inhabited. The Mayan cities that we see now, which we call no, them. No, because Nicaragua. when the Spanish when the Spanish arrived, there were cities that were inhabited by Mayas, but those oh. cities were much smaller than the other ones on the classical period. They were not as powerful as they used to be, uh. and the knowledge that they have on that uh, on those days, on those years, it was a knowledge that was reduced a lot because the main the main brains, let's say that way, the wise people that have, have all the knowledge about astronomy, about, <clears throat> about mathematics, about architecture, have disappeared. Right. When right. the main cities collapse, either that people, the ruling cities, I mean the ruling classes or the ruling families, they either abandon, run away, or they were killed. Or as uh -huh. there was nobody actually to be supporting them, this family were dying gradually, slowly going away until finally many of them disappear or a few of them might have survived, but they were not large enough groups in order to keep the control and they were losing everything. And if nobody was there to transmit the knowledge that they had before, that knowledge was starting to get lost. Right. Or started to get lost. It started to get lost. Although in that, the, when, yeah? when do the codices date back to? Uh, some of them they're back on the early classical period, talking about the first uh, the first years after the uh, the beginning of our era after after Christ. Okay, so six hundred, right. four hundred, say vary a little bit of it. And sometimes right. there is a the, the problem is that there are only three left. Right. Out of the we don't know how many, but they could have been. If we consider that only in the Yucatan there were about 22 cities, 2,200 cities, the same number in Campeche and Chiapas and then Guatemala, oh, no. Quintana Roo, and those ones. We're talking about thousands of cities. And if in, in any city or every city will have made several of these codexes throughout 500 years, we can consider how many of these books and those actually were the books that they have. This is where they have their knowledge. This is where that they have their history. Right, and right. the kind of material is so perishable that the humanity, if, if they were not destroyed by the Spanish and they were just they, they were just secure in buildings in some of the places, we can be sure that they're destroyed by now because of the humanity. Right. And if right. they're not destroyed, they're stained, they're broken. I don't think we're gonna be finding many of those. Eventually we might find a few that by miracle could have been preserved in better condition than the other one, but I don't think that we will find many of them. And this is one of the big gaps because not having enough material is hard to understand, uh, it's harder to translate them. Even right. when this kind of writing is very subjective, they were created, the symbols were created by the scribes. And if the scribe dies and he couldn't pass that information to his son, he got lost. Right. Because you were saying also that the, the symbol, it was very symbolic. So they almost, they wrote not only in, in hieroglyphs, but also in, in um, a lot of metaphors and symbolatry. So you had well, to- uh, they, 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 they are, We don't know because uh, uh, the, the way how they speak nowadays, the spoken language is really very metaphoric. Uh -huh. And if it's spoken that way, we can assume that it was written that way. Right, okay, right, right. So but well, the, the problem is that uh, there is not enough information about that. And the people that were could actually provide information to the Spanish monks that came here to the Franciscans were people that most of them were farmers, descending from farmers. Very few people might have a higher position, but not a higher knowledge. That knowledge, if it was, it was not transmitted properly, got lost. And right. they have basic information about probably measuring the, uh, the movement of the sun to know when the seasons were changing. That could be a little bit of knowledge that was left. But predicting eclipses, talking about mathematical 
uh, functions in that clay, in that case, we are talking about something different, very deep, that most likely that got lost when the cities were abandoned. Right, right. Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take this into a part one, part two, because if we continue on. <laughs> if we want to go like that, we're going to go on part 200. <laughs> I know. But I want to maybe next week, I would like to talk to you when this, uh, talk about when the Spanish arrived and then after what happened, because, you know, a lot of people okay. are really um, surprised when I, when I tell people, well, yeah, I live in Yucatan and there are still, the Mayan culture is still very much alive. There are still uh, villages that only speak Maya. And they're like, really? Wow. Yeah. So I want to uh, get to that point of when the Spanish arrived, what what happened with with that and and um, where the this Mayan... This is something, culture. what happened with the Maya series is very similar to what happened in the Valley of Mexico when the Spanish arrived. There uh -huh. were cities that were dominated by other ones that were stronger, that were bigger. Right. And uh, the Spanish have learned because they came to Yucatan after they was they were around the Valley of Mexico, so they knew right. that there were cities that were dominated by other ones. So they always approached those people in order to offer them some kind of an alliance. Right. If you help, me, if you join me, we'll fight against your enemy, and we're gonna but, free you. Right, but we're not gonna get into that now. We're gonna get into that next week. Okay, so we we'll do it that today. way. <laughs> We're going to do it next week. So come back okay. next week. And we'll do part two of uh, this uh, kind of condensed version of the history of, of Maya. But uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. And thank you so much, Carlos. Again, I oh, always learn. And also, I want to remind everybody that um, if you would like to get in touch with Carlos, I'm going to leave his information here. Uh, of course, he's a, a tour guide. So if you have a group of people that you would like to get together and go on a tour, obviously he knows everything about this area. So pretty much anywhere you want to go, he could he could help you out with that. That is the his information here. So you could always get in touch with him. And, and also, if you enjoy the videos and um, we would really appreciate a like or a share, that really helps to get the, the word out and it helps, uh, helps the publication get out there as well. So I do, also, I do, uh, uh -huh, go ahead. No, no, and also just uh, remember that we are trying to organize a group to Calakmul. Yes, and we're, or yes, I'm sorry, yeah, we're organizing a group to Calakmul, Calakmul and um hopefully by for the end of of march and if you well, are in if, if it's necessary we can move it a little bit to the mid part of april to the mid part of april uh which mm -hmm. is a incredible bio reserve we did a whole video on that and um and carlos would be your guide it's a four to five day trip it would be absolutely spectacular you'll see so many so much wildlife uh bats coming out of their cave culture mayan ruins It'll be a real immersion into that bioreserve and that and that culture with an expert guide. So uh, if you're interested in that trip to Calakmul, then again, you can either message Carlos or you can message me at the at Mid City Beat on Messenger, and I will definitely get you more information about that. So Great. that's it. And thank you so much, Carlos. We'll see you next week. Oh, no, thank you. Bye-bye. We'll be in touch. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.